hello, hello, and welcome. You know, technology never ceases to amaze you, and you too, I know it. And for us, my guests and I, we are troopers because we stayed the course and we stayed here. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good day, wherever you are, sending your way the very best. This is Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies. And I thank you for joining. Hi, Elaine, good to see you here. We never know. We just plow straight ahead and we move forward. Tonight, if you stayed, and I'm hoping that you did, and if not, if you're watching the replay, that you'll stay and watch the replay and give us your feedback. Tonight, this leading lady we're talking to is going to share with you tips and tools about her journey, and her journey is an exciting and interesting one. We're going to be talking with Catherine Mora. Catherine has an interesting and fascinating story, and what I'm going to share with you very briefly before she comes aboard is that she's all about writing a book. And her book, the first book that she wrote, was one of the books that we're going to be talking about because it's all about, and I love the title, Sex, Who Doesn't Love? Lies and Cruising. My husband and I love to cruise, so this was a title that was automatically appealing to us. But I want you to help me to welcome and say hello. Hi, Adair, good to see you. Say hello to our guest, Catherine Mora. Catherine, you are a trooper. Before you say one word, bravo. Thank you for staying the course. So grateful that you're here. How are you this evening? Good to see you. (laughs) Hi, Joy. I'm really good. It's morning over here in Australia, but uh, I'm very good and I'm very excited to be here with you. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you here. And I love it when I have a guest. This is the second time that this has happened and something goes awry. It happens. And the people, you and the other guests that I had, you stay the course, no matter what your plans are, you move ahead. And that's what we're all about. But listen, Catherine, everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. And your journey is helping and supporting them to write that story. I'm going to be one of those. But give us a little bit of your background and then tell us how you came to this writing the story. Yeah, well, I worked in marketing and public relations for 15 years. And I was like an in-house publicist and and marketing consultant, that sort of thing. And I really enjoyed that. Um, And... I spent a lot of time doing that and I took a few career breaks. You know, I went and worked on a cruise ship. I came back. I went and lived in London and I came back and I sort of, I kept departing from it because I guess there was some part of me that felt like it wasn't what I wanted to do all of the time and being stuck in an office working with someone else, it didn't really agree with me in a lot of, on a lot of levels. So um, I did lots of traveling. I, I took a few career breaks. I went and studied dance in New York. I lived in London and I, used to sing so I was uh, auditioning for musical theatre. I went and lived in Paris and didn't really do much apart from eat lemon tarts and drink wine and I kept I kept going back to this job and it just and you know and coming back and forth basically. So then uh, a few years ago actually when my son was born he was six weeks old so this was about six years ago seven years ago I decided I wanted to write a book because people kept telling me, you should write a book, you've done all these amazing things. I didn't really feel like anyone wanted to read about me at that time, so I wrote a novel, Sex, Lives and Cruising, that was inspired by when I worked on the ship. And uh, that has a long story in itself, but ultimately having, yeah, that, that, that did really well and that was part of what got me to where I am today. I'm sure that was something that got you going because hubby and I love to cruise. We, I don't think there's anything we enjoy more. And oftentimes we have said, I'd like to know what's going on behind the stage there after we go and see a show and we go yeah. into all these different restaurants because you just know that there's a lot going on. And your title, Sex, Lies and Cruising, covers a lot of ground. But that book, Catherine, if I'm not mistaken, I read your bio here. It took you into a lot of other avenues that you explored. You got lots of engagements and appointments to go here, there, and do yon to share a little bit about how that book helped to promote you moving forward. Yeah, well, having worked in publicity myself, I knew it was important to get publicity and something that I wanted to do. So I worked with a publicist. I actually had a publicist in London, LA, and in Australia. But the one who really uh, did the hard yards for me was in Australia. And I was in the media. We put out a press release with uh, the angle of what really goes on on cruise ships. And within 20 minutes, the phone started ringing 
And I did television, radio, magazines, online news. It was the number one trending uh, topic on news.com over here. And it just went crazy. I think I did 25 media appearances in 20 days. And it was it was really crazy so then I started getting invited to speak at you know authors events or uh, ladies morning teas or whatever people wanted to know both about working on ships and about writing a book exactly because your title sex first off almost sells any every and all things right and then lies well we're just it's all over the stratosphere now and then cruising so many of the people who are cruising know what's involved there and they want to know more because they're surmising yeah. that more is happening so that's a great way to start and then after you wrote the book when did you know that writing was at the core of what you wanted to do when did you absolutely without hesitation know that you wanted to write a book and you wanted to help others to write a book they were two separate things. I knew I, I always enjoyed writing at school and, and I guess English was my best subject. Um, but it was people kept saying to me, you should write a book, you should write a book, you should write a book. I decided to make it a novel. Um, you know, Alfred is asking a novel or a book, what's the difference? Yes, well, there are, many right. diff- there, there are many different types of books and I help people write business books, self-help books, memoirs. A novel is obviously a made-up story. Um, I didn't want to write a memoir that was 100% truth about my life because I wanted to write a novel where I could make up characters, I could make up stories. And also at that time, I thought I wanted to write full time and I had at least 20 novels in me, all inspired by different things I'd done on my travels throughout the world. So at that time, I wanted to write. And it was a couple of years later that it turned into a business. And that was after I worked with a business coach. Uh, I love that. I love that. I love that because you you mentioned several things there. Because of your ability to move around and live in different areas and different countries, that gave you insight. Even though some people stay in one location and write, so it's either there or it isn't. But Catherine, let us say hello. We have Alfred here, and we have Elaine here, and we have Adair, and we just want to say hello and welcome them because it's always good. And uh, Alfred has already asked you the difference. What is the difference between a novel and a book? And you explain that. And he also said that it's a great background a history that you're sharing with us. So thanks, Alfred, and all the others who are here. We appreciate your coming. You now, because of writing this book, you have gone into really supporting others to write the book. How are you going about that? I'm going to put up your website so that people can get to see your website and know that this is what you do but tell us a little bit about how you do that um i the the just a very quick side to that is i actually went and studied coaching a couple of years ago because i wanted to be a coach and help people i spent a year coaching relationship coaching career transition coaching different things and nothing was quite gelling and then i worked with a business coach who looked at my history with my own book success and said and also my marketing and PR and all these things, pulling them together and said, it makes sense, you should help people. So basically uh, that changed my business completely. So we can probably talk about that after as well. But what I do now is I have a six month program when people have an idea for a book and I take them right from their idea. I help them get clarity on why they're writing it, how it's gonna fit in with goals. Usually someone has business goals where they wanna grow a coaching business or something and the book is part of that. So it'll be some sort of self-help book or a memoir that shares their story. Um, I help them plan and outline the book, work on how to grow their audience. Then we have a few months where they're writing every week and giving me their chapters. I give them feedback on their writing to help them improve as they go. Then they go through an editing process. I've got editors on my team who come in and edit the book. I've got a book designer who does all the cover and interior layout. And then they get printouts of their book, like hard copies, and a plan on how to use that to achieve their goals, which might be getting speaking gigs or media and and new clients, things like that. I love that. You know what I liked also when I read this, uh, Catherine, because I've seen this happen. I happen to love, I'm a voracious reader. And the time now is a factor. But yet I've seen where so many people who write a book and it's a good juicy book, juicy is a new buzzword now, that it turns into a TV script and that's what they wanted to do with yours. Is that yeah. still in play? Is that something that's still on the drawing board? What happened there? Because that app happens often. 
Yeah, well, a few people had mentioned they thought it would make a great TV series because one journalist described my book as uh, Bridget Jones's Diary meets Sex and the City on board the love boat. Yes, yes. And my publicist in LA had a friend who worked uh, in television who said they thought it would make a great show, but at the time they were looking at a reality show, which I I'm not, wasn't keen on. Um, so it sort of went to the side for a few years, but only literally in the last month I've... Uh, a TV script writer is actually reading the book now with a view to writing a pilot for us to try and get funding to get it off the ground as an Australian production because they're doing a lot of TV and film right here, right now. Well, that's that's a key word you mentioned there, funding. Let me ask you, because I love the title, Everyone Has a Book Within Them. Whether or not you write it is another novel. Yet, what is a tip that you can share with all of us if we know that there is a book and we want to write a book what is one of the best beginner's tips that you can share with us to get started? I have in my head numerous titles and novels and things that I want to write about. And yet there's that yeah, yeah. ball of confusion there. What's a good tip? There's Did a couple. If you try, if you can't decide on which book to write, my tip would be what's in line with your goals. So if you're if you want to grow a business and your business might be financial coaching, for example. Um, it would make sense to write a book that was something around organising your finances because you want to be seen as an expert in that area. Um, now, for the most part, my, I've only got one client writing a novel. For the most part, we're not talking about novels here. We're talking about any other kind of memoir, business book or self-help book, okay? But right. pick the book that's in line with your goals that will achieve some sort of objective or outcome for yourself. So getting clients, getting speaking gigs, getting media, pick the topic that you want to position yourself as an expert in and that's what you're going to be writing about. If you're writing a memoir to share your story, why are you sharing your story? Do you want to appeal to people who would become your ideal client because you will help them achieve certain goals which you achieved by the end of your story? So pick the book that makes sense with your goals would be my first one. And the other thing is, you know, do an outline and plan it, but stop trying to get it perfect and just start writing. Because a lot of people will keep saying to me they don't know where to start. Yes. You just need to start. Like just start writing. Because until you've written a first draft, you've got nothing to work with to improve upon. So just write the first draft and get it written. Write every day whether you feel like it or not and just get the book written. Stop saying, I don't know where to start and it's not, and I don't know what to do. Just start writing it. Beautifully spoken because what you said initially before you got to the just start is write about what's akin to your natural nature and what you really love and what you want to talk about and share your natural gifts and then start, begin, get going. So that is yeah. at the beginning because when you're multifaceted, multi-talented, and most people are, then you just go from one topic to the other but pick the one that gives you the most boom and then go from there that's a great tip when yeah we, pick the one that's in line with what you want to be doing with your with your business or your life yeah. and just pick one you can always write the other ones later yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense because most people have so many things in their head that they want to bring out and, and present to the public but yet you have to narrow it down and focus as my friend said to me, focus, focus, focus. You have to focus. So that makes a lot of sense. How long did it take you to write your book? Well, um, starting when my son was six weeks old turned out to not be a very good idea. Um, <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll have all this spare time now. I'm going to write. So that probably wasn't no normal circumstances. And I would say the first, third, the first eight chapters of the book took me about... 18 to 20 months because I would write when I felt like it and I would take a break because obviously I also went back to work full time. So I was working full time with a baby and breastfeeding through the night, that sort of thing. So I would get so tired. I would take months off and I would go back and forth. So that first eight chapters took me a really long time. Mm -hmm. And then one day when I decided this is it, I'm going to write it. Nothing's going to stop me. I wrote that 13 chapters, that last 13 chapters in about 10 weeks, I think. Um, because I wrote every day whether I felt like it or not and I just powered through and that is now what I do with my clients. They've got 12 weeks to write their book and it's it's not so quick like that sort of write a book in a weekend type thing where the quality is awful 
and it's not so long that you lose momentum. You've got three months of full on dedicated writing every day, pumping out one or two chapters a week and keeping that momentum going because getting to a first draft is the goal. Once you've got that draft, you can tidy it up beautifully, but you can't tidy up something you haven't written. That's that's well said too, because that first draft, whatever it is that you're doing, regardless, mm -hmm. it's raw, but it's your gut. It's what initially comes to the fore and you just put it on paper and then you put it aside and go back and it's much easier to polish it and elevate yes. it up to where you want it to be. So that I yes. get. When it comes to writing, you mentioned just get started, get going. What's another tip that you can share with people who are hesitating to write that book? Even though you've given us two great tips, what's mm -hmm. another tip that will motivate you and excel you forward as you write that book? Firstly, definitely do an outline. I don't believe in writing what they call by the seat of your pants. So like do an outline, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So have, you know, and a second thing would be to drop the reader into the action. Depending on what your book is, don't start the story right at the beginning of your life or right at the beginning of everything. Start it in a moment that will grab the reader's attention, a pivotal moment in your life if it's a memoir, a life-changing um significant time you could write that as a prologue and then in chapter one you can go back further in the beginning to where your story really started um, so always grab them from page one when i worked with an editor on about the 12th edit of my book we actually deleted the first three chapters and started <laughs> where i had actually started chapter four which was when she wakes up on board the ship after you know 24 hours after arriving and we got rid of all the backstory because readers want to be engaged from page one. So that would be one thing. Um, the other thing is make sure your book flows from chapter to chapter where you're leaving them with something at the end of a chapter that makes them want to keep reading. So almost like for, don't foreshadow too much where you're always saying it's almost like a cliffhanger, but you want to have something happen where the person thinks, I just want to read one page of the next chapter to see what happens. Because people email me all the time saying, they were up all night because they kept saying, I'm just going to read the first page of the next chapter to see what happens and then I'll go to sleep. I'm just going to. And then they would keep reading and then they just had to read one more page. So keep <laughs> the person, keep the reader flowing through the book. Um, the other thing is don't edit as you go. I love this explanation of how you go about this because what you get, just gave us, Catherine, I'm in the process of putting together three packages that I want to promote. And your verbiage is a wee bit different, but it's the same bottom line. You said drop the reader into the first chapter, the first whatever, as quickly as you can, and make them grab and hold on to the page, something that excites and inspires, motivates, whatever. And yep. you can use different verbiage, but that's what you're doing with anything you're marketing and promoting, yes? Yes. Ah, and to get that explosive, mind-boggling, tingling excitement when you grab them on the first page, that's that's an art form. Yeah, it is. And that's something I work on with all of my book coaching clients as well. Where should they be starting their book? And And it can take sometimes someone else when you've told them all your story for someone else to say hey i think that might be a good spot to start um it often helps to have that insight from somebody else who's who's done it a few times yeah yeah because you you need that uh, second set of eyeballs looking upon what you're doing and helping you with it because the the, the bottom line the, the 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 really gist of what you want to say and how you want to say it it's there but you need someone else to look upon it and give you a different avenue maybe mm. to explore it so that it excites the people who are going to be reading it right off the bat. Now, I know that yeah. you've written for a lot of different publications. Tell us a little bit about some of the ones that you're writing for now and what you've done in far, as far as writing for them, what type of articles you're writing for these different magazines. I know you've, you've and also you've included many of the, the TV channels that you've been on. I know you've written for Cosmopolitan and Daily Mail and so on. Share a little bit about that. Um, a lot of those articles were about about me. 
Um, and some I've written and some are, are written about me. So there's sort of a few different ones. Um, I haven't done any articles for a little while because I've been working so hard on the business, but it is on my list of things I will get around to doing again. But I, I spent some time doing quite a lot of writing about relationships for a whole lot of a whole lot of online publications mainly. Um, and I also did some things about sort of general coaching type tips about vision or or you know making a difference in your life and and things like that um so yeah i think i've written i've written quite a lot about yeah relationships stories of women things like that but certainly a lot of the articles are out there are merely about my story um and my background things like that so yeah there's quite a variety actually but now from from now on i'd really just be focusing on helping people decide on what they want to write and, and getting started more focused on book type things because a lot of people have a book in them. Well, there a lot of people do. And I think you've probably answered the next question that I have for you is what what's on the drawing boards for you next? What do you have in the hopper that's coming up in the next uh, three, six months, a year that you are putting a lot of love and all of that other stuff into? What's What's in the works for you? There are three main things. At the moment, I just changed the format of my program from being four months to six months, so that last couple of months with the edits and the final books and the prints, that sort of thing. So I really want to spend a few months just getting into the groove of how that's going to be working. Um, and then the next thing is um, starting to do some podcasts, to be an, uh, a guest on some podcasts, which will be great, some different business podcasts. And uh, I'm going to New York next month in September. I was going for a conference, which now has been cancelled, but I'm going anyway. And uh, I've got about 12 days in New York. So I'm actually looking really this week and next week at organising some book writing workshops while I'm there, like some half-day workshops to get people started on their books. Um, that's just going to be in New York, New York City. And then I also was approached by someone who does retreats and she's looking at putting together a book writing retreat about a week long or five days long in Spain, in the forest, in a castle uh, in November or December. And yeah, so we're looking at doing some book writing retreats in, in Spain at the end of the year as well. In Spain, ooh, I love Spain. That word retreat, I seem to be seeing it a lot over the internet lately. It used to be just the marketing and the webinar and the promoting here and there. But of late, it seems that everyone is going off to do retreats. And why do you think that might be? Because a lot of people, when they're busy with their business and life and children and families and things like that, yes. uh, they find it hard to get the focus to sit down and work on their book. A retreat gives you an opportunity to leave all of that behind. Someone else is cooking for you. Someone else is cleaning for you. Everything's taken care of. You're just sitting there focused on your book and getting started. And it can get people, you're not going to, you're not going to get your whole book written in that week, but you'll get it planned, outlined, started, everything organized so that you get on a roll and you get over that initial hump of oh my goodness how do I start and the same with any kind of health retreat or anything it's like this focus time that gets you off on a good footing for whatever beautiful, it is that you want to be do. Beautifully explained and I think you nailed it because if you have kids or maybe a significant other husband wife whatever it's nice to get away and just get completely and, and totally into your mindset of what you want to do and how you want to do it and a retreat with a lovely environment and setting offers you that opportunity. I think because of our lateness and everything else, and maybe because of me, Catherine, I wasn't able to say hello and to welcome all of the beautiful people who are here to say hello and to join us. And Alfred has come up with lots of questions. He says, my book is about grief recovery. Should I write about my experience about coming back from grief recovery? Mm, good question, Alfred. What do you think, Catherine? Yeah, well, on, um, I would say yes, but I generally someone needs to have a very strong objective for writing a book because it is a it is a difficult road to get it done uh you know there's there's months worth of work going into it every day so having an objective at the end is very important 99 percent of the time so having a reason for writing the book do you have like are you a trained therapist who helps people around grief 
because grief is certainly one of the things you have to be very careful, any kind of grief or trauma. Is yes. You have to be very careful with throwing around advice in that area. Anecdotal, this is what happened to me type of, and therefore it will work for you advice is uh, risky. So if you were a trained therapist and you trained as a therapist because you would overcome your own grief or had your own grief, you could tell your story and then you're promoting your service as a therapist to help people uh, in a way which is empirically uh, proven through research, for example. If you want to share your story to motivate people but you don't have some sort of objective in line with business at the end, it's harder because uh, you have to have a reason, like what is the reason for help for writing the book? People say that they want to help others, which is great, but how do they want to help and inspire? So, yes, you can write about your journey and the tools that you use to overcome your grief and that might inspire others that they can do the same. And uh, so, yes, it definitely I've got a number of clients who are writing about overcoming some kind of grief or trauma, but most of them are in a place where they're training as coaches or therapists or whatever to help people through similar things. And the book is an entry point into understanding them as a person and what they went through. And then they'll have tools for people for their own journey. Uh, Alfred also says that was a, a, a good explanation and quite clear. How long does a book usually take to write the first draft? He's asking. And I think I know the answer to that, but I want you to answer it. <laughs> Look, this that's a very open question because yes. uh, how long is the book? How fast do you write? How good is your spelling and grammar? You know, how fast can you type? How often are you sitting down to write? There are so many variables. Um, my clients spend three months writing, but uh, and some of them are writing one chapter a week and some are writing two chapters a week. So they're writing anywhere from three to 8,000 words a week, depending on how long their book is that we have planned and outlined. So it's very, very open-ended. If you're doing it on your own without support, it usually takes a lot longer because you don't have anyone sitting there waiting for your chapters. So my clients have to submit their work to me every week and that helps Pretty much all of them say if it wasn't for me waiting for their chapters, they never would have gotten around to writing them because too many other things pop up. We love our Alfred. I think Alfred has that book here and he's getting ready to go. And he has one other question here, Catherine. He says, where can we find the book that you wrote? And so I don't think I have that either. I'm sure it's a book, but give us the bookstores because I want to put that on the website and the Joyce TV, all the data that's going up for you. So where do we find that book? Just so somebody has um, our guide. The digital, ver yeah, the digital version is very easy to find. It's on, you know, Amazon and Good. I guess iTunes or, you know, okay. pretty much if you type it into wherever you normally get your books, you're going to be able to get a copy. There are print copies around. Uh, but from various places, depending on where my distributor sends them, I'm not quite sure. But but it's very easy to get the e okay. version. Okay, no problem. You? I will definitely get that book because sex, lies, and cruising just titillates my imagination, and I'm sure millions of others. So good for you. Well, I guess I've moved a lot beyond that now because my next <laughs> book I'm working on is a nonfiction book about how to write a book to get speaking gigs in media. Now, Catherine, you're so light years ahead of me because that was my next question to you. What are you working <laughs> on next and what's the next book? Tell us a little bit more about that next book that you have coming up. Yeah, so um, how to write a book to get speaking gigs and media. It's just outlines how to get started with your book, how to choose your topic, how to plan an outline, how to build your audience, and basically how to actually go about writing, how often to write, all of those sorts of things. And then at the end, how to use that to achieve these goals of speaking gigs and media. So how do you use the book to get yourself speaking gigs or to get into the media? And can you get media? Because not everyone can. Yeah. Um, how do you pick a, an angle for your media release and, and how do you go down that road and is it the right road for you? And if not, you know, what are your other options? Great. I love that because most people think that it's automatically going to lead to this, that, or the other. But what you're saying, and I like what you're saying, you're saying not necessarily. It's all depending upon the book and the subject matter and all the other variables that go into it. And, and when we started out, you spoke to the funding that you would need to get the TV script made into a movie or TV show, whatever. So there's a lot of stuff involved here. And this is what you take 
everyone through when they come to you for their 12 week program. Is that not so? Um, with the six month program at the end, we do a little roadmap of what's next for them, um, which it wouldn't necessarily cover television and, and movies and that sort of thing. That's quite advanced and you, you do need to turn your book into a script. So that's a whole nother level. But if that was your plan, we would have a plan of how you approach people and what would be the next steps. But basically my program takes you up to finishing your book and then planning on what to do with it afterwards. But yes, definitely not everyone can get media. Yes. Media won't write us. You can't send a media release saying, I've written a book, can you please promote it? That's not how it works. No, 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 no. And I think that might be a mis misconception in a lot of different circles. Catherine, thank you. You you are a real trooper. There's no question about that. Is there anything that you're about or that you're doing that you want to speak to or anything that I didn't ask you that you have a question about before we say so long for now? And I want to thank the people who showed up here tonight after our little mishap and thank you most of all. But is there anything that maybe you want to speak to that I didn't ask or left out? I think something we were going to talk about, which we didn't end up covering, was how if anyone watching has their own business that isn't doing well, because um, obviously we ended up talking more about books and, and different things like that. But right. for anyone who's not going to write a book or who isn't um, wanting to be a book coach or whatever, how someone uh, can make their own business successful, because certainly mine wasn't and I made lots of mistakes and I wasn't doing well with my coaching business. Um, when it came down to it, I, I did hire a business coach, which now I would never go through life without one. Uh -huh. uh, one who's had at least five years of experience in business, not someone who's new to it, someone who's proven that they are successful. Um, that it was it's all about niching and finding the thing that really, it's the same as picking a topic for your book, I guess, with your business, finding... Yes. Finding that thing that you can do very, very specifically for a very, very specific group of people. So not trying to work with everyone, not trying to do everything, being known as a specialist. As soon as I became a book coach and I only help people with their book, I don't do any other coaching anymore. My business completely changed. I was able to stop contracting, stop working for other people stop doing any of that work and just do 100% my business because as soon as there was that one thing everyone knew me for, yes. then that's when all the work started coming because everyone knew that's why they go to me. I also don't work with men. I only work with women. Um, so I have quite a lot of criteria and it really helps everyone you know, know exactly what I do. Catherine, I love the way we're ending this because your honesty about all the different projects and endeavors that you were involved with, the failures that you've had. I've had mine, tons of them. In fact, so many that my husband says, if you don't get yourself up and running here soon, we're going to be divorced. That's a joke. But the truth is we'd make a lot of failures. We have yeah. a lot of failures before we find our niche. And then when you find it, it's the developing of it. And everything takes time. And you have to find what works for you. And you can't, and we're not sexist here. You're dealing only with women i'm dealing as well but by the same token there is also the male component there in one area yeah. or another so alfred thank you for showing up and welcome don't feel that we're sliding you we're not no, the only the i actually have a male client who i already had but the reason i only work with women now is because there's a group component to my program yes. where we all share in a group and we have a call and we have we share our struggles with the book process when you mix genders it changes the vibe and it changes the dy dynamic because a lot of women, when they're writing a personal story, they feel too embarrassed to share some of the things that they're talking about. That's the only reason it's become women only. But having one gender in your target market helps you with marketing and promoting yeah. yourself as well. And and what I'm finding is that real, real, real men, they don't have an issue with that at all. It's only those who have that wobbly ego who have an issue with that. But anyway, that's a great way to end because we're all making mistakes. We're all finding and searching for our way, our niche. And then once we find it, that's where we plow on and we begin to build and so on. So you shared a lot of good tips and a lot of good information with us. I'm absolutely over the moon that you stayed the course and that you're still mm -hmm. here after we had that little mishap, it happens with technology. So I thank yes. you. I'm going to say so long for now and put you to the side and say again, I'm delighted that you were able to spend this time and I'll be over in a second to say goodbye. Thank you again. Thanks, right. Joy.
Alrighty. And thank you. Technology, Alfred, you know, it's always something. This is the second time that I've had a program scheduled and then Zoom, you get ready to go with these wonderful, phenomenal guests and Zoom, something happens. Me not being a techie, never knowing what it is, but you just plow on and you continue. And so far, I've been lucky. Lucky in that those of you who showed up are still here. I see names and faces, Elaine, Adair, Alfred, thank you for staying the course. We know that many people come for the replay, but it's also good to see you here. We like the interacting. Catherine had lots of good information to share with us all. And if you're thinking about writing that book, and I think somewhere inside all of us, there is that book, then here is someone that you really need to touch base with. I've only known her for a short time, but I know of her and her background and other people. And I think you couldn't find a better person to write, help you, support you in writing that book. So wherever you are, my friends, as always, thank you for joining us. Remember, next Tuesday night at 7 and next Wednesday night at 7 for Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies. And as always, a pleasure to be with you, knowing the feeling is mutual, and we look forward to seeing you again and soon. Until we do, have a smashing weekend. Enjoy. All the best. So long for now. Cheers. <laughs>